Hey guys, welcome back to another video. So as you've seen from the title, this video is about the UGAT and it's an introduction to the UGAT. Something everyone has to come across when they're applying to medical school, if they're applying to most medical schools, it's the entrance exam that you have to face. So today we're gonna discuss all the main points regarding the UCAT. So if you've never heard anything about what the UCAT involves, if you don't know anything about it, just the fact that it is a step on the way to med school, I hope today this video will clear up all your doubts and it'll give you good direction to start preparing for the UCAT, to know what it involves and basically yeah to just get familiarized with what it is so without any further ado let's get right into it so before we get further in the video i want to talk about uh, mission medicine which is a medicine admissions tutoring company which is absolutely fantastic they offer tutoring packages and they offer support throughout the process of your medical application uh, whether it's with your personal statement entrance exam getting your offer or beyond that where you're uh, giving your interviews as well. They also have a UCAT page with a lot of UCAT resources So I definitely recommend going and checking them out and definitely signing up to one of their tutoring packages You can use my code which is Siobhan10 to get a 10% discount as well So definitely go check Mission Medicine out. I'll leave all the links in the description. The UCAT. What is the UCAT? Why do you have to take the UCAT? Wait, let's organize this well why do you have to take the UCAT and when do you have to take the UCAT? The UCAT is an entrance exam for medical schools in the UK. It's the University Clinical Aptitude Test. It's, it's the entrance exam required by the majority of universities in the UK, uh, as opposed to the BMAT, which is the other one. And uh, basically, if you look it up online, you figure out which medical schools require the UCAT and which ones require the BMAT. So, if you have chosen to take the UCAT, you'll have to take it before your UCAS application and you'll have to submit your score as something to be judged by the universities. And it is a significant determinant on whether you'll get an interview call slash an offer from the medical schools you apply to. Here's the UCAT. The UCAT is a reasoning based exam. It does not involve any or little to no knowledge of any content not like BMAT which is based on GCSE science and math this is complete reasoning the four sections four reasoning based sections in the UCAT are verbal reasoning quantitative reasoning abstract reasoning and decision making that is not the order that they were coming in the test but you'll figure that out later on um, so verbal reasoning, basically English, quantitative reasoning, basically maths, decision making, that's more of problem solving and uh, basically logical conundrums in a way. And finally, abstract reasoning, that's basically uh, visual reasoning in a way. You have to observe a lot of shapes and uh, objects and clusters of objects and you have to find patterns and you have to answer questions based on these patterns you find and what you understand from what you see. Uh, it's something that's very new and can be very complex but you get used to it as you practice. Um, there's also a fifth part of the UCAT and that is the situational judgment section. This section involves a lot of ethically ambiguous or challenging I want to say ethically challenging scenarios where you have to decide what the appropriate actions are or whether certain actions are appropriate or not and uh, yeah basically this one is based upon some knowledge knowledge of the gmc's guidelines on what good medical practice or good medical conduct is now let's talk about the scoring of the ucat so the UCAT is scored out of 3,600. The four reasoning based sections are scored out of 900 each. And that's when they are weighted. Otherwise, I, let me run it down for you. Verbal reasoning has 44 questions, which you have to answer in 21 minutes. Decision making has 29 questions in 31 minutes. Quantitative reasoning, 36 questions in 24 minutes. And finally, um, abstract reasoning which is 55 questions in uh, just 13 minutes uh, situational judgment 
that is not scored numerically, that is scored based on a band. You get scored from ba in bands from band one to band four, band one being the best, band four being the lowest. And that's 69 questions in 26 minutes. As you can see, it's very time constrained, which makes it uh, quite difficult but you get used to it as you practice and you get better as you practice. So eventually you can manage. Now let's talk about what a good score in the UCAT is. So as I said, it's out of 3,600. A good score would be something that's 2,800 and above because that'll put you pretty much in the top decile. Um, we average out per section, that's 700 per section. And uh, any score 2600 or 650 average and above is also pretty good and it will give you a good chance of getting into medical school and anything below 650 or 2600 doesn't mean you can't apply to medical school but it will it could potentially mean that your you get score is something you might have to overcome and band wise band one and band two are generally considered good and below that is considered a low band and usually some medical schools don't consider band lower than band three and some don't consider band three if i'm wrong but again you'd have to check that by university or medical school it's a computerized test it has to be taken between July and October and usually it's taken in test centers but with COVID I'm not sure what the exact guidelines are this year and I don't know what the exact guidelines are by country you might want to figure more of that out on your own by looking at the UCAT website and looking at your particular situation so you'd want to get used to giving the exam on a computer and there are many resources available for that. So I think that basically covers everything in the introduction to the UCAT. I think if you know all this about the UCAT, you're pretty well prepared mentally to tackle the idea of giving the exam and preparation for the exam. Upcoming videos will deal with that and uh, hopefully those will help you as well. If today's video helped you, if you liked it, don't forget to drop a like down below and if you haven't already to hit that subscribe button and I will see you in the next video.